Vilgusa, meine Zuschauer. This is Supreme Ruler 2020. <clears throat> A very strange game. Um, it is a sort of grand strategy game, kind of. Um, it's published by Paradox, but I really would not compare it to Europa Universalis. It's, it's just, it's kind of odd. It also has very annoying music that loops over and over, so I have turned that off. Actually, the game is, without its music, it's pretty much silent most of the time, except for this annoying beeping sound, which I have also turned off. Anyway, the game takes place in 2020, as you might imagine. You select a country in the world, any country, from the Gambia to Russia, any country, and you play. There's no structure, you're not told to do anything, you just screw around. Now... Of course, just like in Europa Universalis, what you want to do is make a big empire, right? Everybody tries to do that. Manipulating the market so you can sell oil at a high price is just really boring. Like right here on the main menu, there's a picture of a jet, right? You're supposed to be a military strongman. So, the single player has a bunch of scenarios you can play um, that do have you play as a specific country with a specific goal, but that's just, that's dumb. We don't want that. We're going to play the campaign. There are a couple ones. Global Crisis starts with Russia declaring war on, I think, Poland and Germany or something. Um, and World 2020 is the standard one. Shattered World is the world, but all the big countries are broken up into littler countries. Uh, it just makes it so the United States doesn't always conquer everybody, or Russia doesn't always conquer, China doesn't always conquer everybody. However, I like playing in World 2020. It just it just seems more balanced, I guess, with big guys and little guys fighting for control. Also, there's this very important World Volatility Slider. The World Volatility Slider is very, very important. Um, it is how hostile the world is, how the different countries of the world will treat each other. No volatility means there will basically be no wars. Very high volatility means there is always constant war everywhere, all the time. All the countries just go insane and just bombing each other. Um, because we want the game to be interesting and fun, we're going to have it on a high, but not very high. On very high, it's just kind of ridiculous. Anyway, I, I really wish this screen allowed you to click on a map to see what country you selected, but you can't do that. You have to select from this list. I will be playing as Africa, Ghana, because Ghana has a pretty big population, decent uh, gross domestic product per capita, it also has oil and timber, lots of farmland, um, hydroelectricity with a big dam on the Volta River. It's, uh, it's, it's a pretty good starting country. Uh, it's, you know, you could play as something smaller and weaker like Togo or Benin or Burundi or something, but I like Ghana. Ghana's nice. It has a lot of potential. Uh, so of course I will, s oh wait, actually, before I go to the loading screen, we are going to start the game without units. Uh, that, to me, just seems more fair, because if you don't click that, you will start the game with helicopters or jets or things that you don't know how to build, unless you are one of the big powerhouses, the United States or Germany or something. So you'll have these things sucking up all your money that you don't know how to use. And in this game, I don't think there's a way you can destroy units. So I don't want to have these money tanks just sitting around doing nothing. So we're going to uh, start the game without units. Other than that though, not going to change any settings. You can you can tweak this stuff a whole lot if you want, but uh, yeah, I won't. So now I will of course skip the loading screens. Alrighty, here it is. Supreme Ruler 2020. I tried to change it to 60 frames per second, uh, hopefully the game won't crash or something. Uh, so each of these stars on the map is a capital of a country. What I don't like is that you can't see 
the control that countries have. You have to zoom in to see their borders. Just a little thing. So we are Ghana, over here. So we've got this big lake and these little rivers, which we can use for hydroelectricity and farming. We also start with this big hydroelectric dam, which is awesome. Uh, means we don't have to import electricity. Our intelligence report basically says nothing. Uh, like that. Okay, so to start, let's have a look at our nation's resources. Uh, Matt Phillips. Okay, so agriculture... You know, it's kind of a bummer, actually, that no matter what country you're playing, you have room for agriculture. Even if you're playing as, a, you know, a country that's mostly desert, like Mali or Burkina Faso or Niger, it, you still have plenty of farmland. Namibia, I think only like some very small percentage of Namibia's land is actually arable, but in this game, there's plenty of arable land. Uh, I just don't like it. Anyway, we have plenty of farmland, uh, and don't worry about food. And water, we have plenty of water because of this lake and uh, the rivers, so that's no big deal. Timber, we got plenty of that, lots of jungle here. Oil, we do have oil offshore. That's important. Uh, we'll be using that a lot. So, yippee, we do have to build our derricks, though. That will take some time. Now, one thing that we desperately need, though, that we don't have is coal. As you can see, the nearest coal deposits are some in Algeria. They're in Niger. Niger, of all the West African countries, is the strongest. Uh, or, sorry, Nigeria, not Niger. Ni Niger's up here. Uh, Nigeria has lots of oil and coal. Nigeria is pretty scary. Uh, so that will be one of our targets in the future. Metal ore, we start with a bunch of that. We also start next to Togo, which has a bunch too. Uh, I, I plan with... Okay, so the first president of Ghana was this guy named Kwame Nkrumah. And he was... He ruled Ghana from 1957 to 1966. And he was the coolest guy ever. He was, he, he was a dictator, pretty much. He had absolute power. But he was, he was a really benevolent dictator. This dam exists because of him. And, uh, he invested tons of money in schools and roads. And he wanted Ghana to be a big industrial powerhouse. Just like, a small European country like the Netherlands or Belgium or Portugal or something. He wanted he wanted Ghana to be a big leader in science and technology, you know, the example to set for Africa. That didn't happen, but while he was in power, so much stuff happened. He, he had this idea for the United States of Africa, where he wanted all these countries to come together to be just this incredibly powerful, wealthy, prosperous, great big African nation didn't happen. But but here, now in this game, I plan on realizing Kwame Nkrumah's dream. Uh, he, in 1966, was kicked out of power by uh, a military coup. The United States sent a bunch of Marines and guns and stuff to kick him out of power because he took a bunch of money from the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Oh, man. Kwame Nkrumah, that was not a good idea. Anyway. We have metal ore, quite a bit of that. We will be mining uranium. We don't have. Uh, we also will not be using uranium. It's only for nukes. We will not be making nukes. There is some uranium. You can mine a bunch of uranium and just sell it. You can make a pretty good profit. In fact, if you play as Namibia, you should definitely make most of your money selling uranium. However, we don't have that. We do have electricity, though. As you can see, electricity is pretty rare over here in West Africa. But we've got a ton of it over here because of this hydroelectric dam. Yes. If you look at some other African countries, you can see, like, R Rwanda, Burundi, no electricity. Uh, Namibia, I think, has no electricity, yeah. South Africa, and when I say they have no electricity, I mean they don't have any place to produce electricity. Lesotho, Swaziland, very, very limited electricity. But if you look at the United States, lots of electricity. Uh, this is hydroelectricity, I should say, so rivers. Big rivers. We have a big river here. And population is kind of meaningless. Um, yeah, it, it's not useful for anything. 
So, uh, we can look at our finances now. We are making $41,000 million per year, or $114 million per day. That's really good. We can use that uh, to our great advantage. Let's increase social spending, actually, um, to... Ah, you know what, just leave it right there, 86. That's fine. And then taxes, we'll leave right there. Bonds and loans, I don't really understand, but whatever. In a trade summary, okay. Science and technology is a big deal. We will want that a lot. So at the moment, our military is basically just dudes with guns and some trucks to carry around their bullets and food and stuff. And that's fine. Let's... Uh, transportation's really important. Hmm... What do we want to get first? I forget which one of these is the best to get early. Is it satellites? No, not for us. Satellites are really expensive. Uh, science... That's just pure science. Uh, how about medical? No, I guess we should upgrade our, our military. Uh, composite armor. Sure. Okay. Now, let's see, we've dealt with that. Now, this screen is very important. Production. Let's see if I can find the right screen here. Okay, so our production of food is 39,000 tons. We did, we used 30,000, which means that we produce an excess of 9,000 that we export. So that's good. We don't need to worry about food at the moment. Water, uh, we have plenty of water. Yeah, we've got, we've got the lake there, no problem. Timber, um, we are using slightly more than we're producing, but that's not a big deal. Petroleum, we are importing. We definitely want to uh, start that offshore production very soon. Coal, we definitely want. Metal ore, we, we, not, we want. Because consumer goods, industry goods, and military goods require coal, metal, electricity, oil to produce. We actually have a couple factories here in Accra, I think. Yes, there's an industrial factory right here. You see it consumes those resources. There's a consumer factory. So um, we want to get those resources. So to start, I will build uh, industrial some... Well, see, the problem is you can look at these, since oil is so important, you would think we'd want that first. Here's an oil derrick. All right, we want to build those. Um, I forget how you get permission to build oil derricks out here in the ocean. I, I don't remember, but whatever. Anyway, we'd build right here. However, if you look at the oil derrick, facility costs $2,400 million. We don't even have that much money. They're so expensive that we are not going to worry about it at the moment. Instead, we will make a... Yeah, industrial... Where is it? Ore mine. Here we go. So we will... I just realized I forgot to change the volume settings. That's okay. This game doesn't have a very high volume. Not a lot of sounds either. Uh, let me just mess with the volume, speakers, okay, that should be better. So, the ore mines each cost $120 million, and so I just built eight of them, which is way more than what we have, but our income will make up for it. And also, while we are doing that, we have no units at the moment, and we will need... We have high world volatility, so we definitely want to have some units. So, you can see with our production facility, we can produce four infantry units and one transport unit, the supply truck. We have no knowledge of aircraft. We can only produce one civilian cargo ship and no missiles. So, what I want to do is 
Don't make militia or airborne. They are terrible by themselves. Make light infantry. I'm gonna make. Uh, let's do seven light infantry and three supply trucks. Sure. You can also click on these guys and change how they act. I don't think that's really quite worth though. Uh, let's see. We will worry about this state thing in just a moment. There's also one more finance, this guy. Um, I forget which one of these I want to do. Decrease spending, increase taxes, improve GDP. Uh, you know, uh, that's fine. Whatever. You can just you can do whatever. Mr. Dude Guy. Oh, also, our government is a uh, democracy, so we will have elections every five years. Um, however, in this game, five years is a super long time. Incredibly long. We will probably finish conquering all of West Africa by 2025, so that's kind of not at all important. Ah, uh, what else was I going to do? Oh, yes, right, state. So... Off screen, I will do a lot of this, which is where we find another country, like, not Ivory Coast, that's too close. We'll do Turkey, just for example. And then we'll go here. This is the stuff we have. What we do is offer them $510 million worth of stuff and then try to get some money from them. Now, they will not give us $510 million. No, they will give us maybe $20 million. Uh, yeah, there we go. We can get about 23 million from them, and there we go. That's what we'll do, and we can just keep doing that for every country all around the world, and just try to get as much money as possible from them. And it's kind of really tedious and uh, annoying. But it's a good way of getting some money early. So anyway, that's what I'll be doing off-screen for quite a long time. Okie dokie, so some time has passed. Uh, the ore mines have finished, and... If you look at the production interface, metal ore. We are producing way more than we're using, so we're exporting that. Very nice. The oil platform is... Mm, yeah, it's going to be a long time until that's done, but... The good news is that our military is more or less ready to go. So let's get everybody else started up. Now, uh, the problem with military is there's this military initiative thing where they sort of have a mind of their own, but they're really stupid and don't really attack. They just kind of drive around and don't resupply, and they will go through a desert that has no roads or infrastructure, and they're just really dumb. Yeah, it doesn't... That, no. They don't really make a lot of sense. So, anyway, I'm gonna have them go over here, actually. And do we have a garrison in Dzodz? Okay, we're gonna get a bunch of guys over there in Dzodz. And our dudes are just going to hang around. See, they just they kind of drive around. No, no, stop that. No military initiative. Okie dokie. Let me put the supply... Since we're just sitting around, let me put the supply trucks in the back. And then the infantry in the front. So that the supply trucks don't do a lot of fighting. Okay, so this little town should have some defense garrisons. Okay, now what we're going to do is declare war on Togo. Now, probably my favorite thing about this game is you do not need a casus belli. You can declare war on anybody at any time for any reason. It's great. Unlike in Europa of Asalus or Crusader Kings, you have to, you know fabricate a claim, or do some ridiculous crap. Nah, in this game, you just fight. 
because you want to. It's awesome. So press the big red button and bam, we're at war with Togo. So now these guys will start shooting at each other. Should. They're not shooting at each other. Well, uh, let's have them invade. The there we go. Now they're shooting at each other. I hope that's not too loud. These sounds you'll be hearing a lot. So basically, they're fighting now, and our supply trucks back there are supplying them with ammo and and stuff. So let's see. Uh, am I still producing stuff? Oh yeah, my DEFCON uh, should increase that, and we are still producing infantry and whatnot. Oh yes, also instantly deploy them when they are done, please. I think we're winning. Not really sure on that one. Uh... We took their yeah, we got it! Okay, so I think, yes, we got kicked out of the UN. Uh, that's fine. I don't care. Increased spending. Uh, no. Uh, no. Alright, we got a bunch of money from capturing the capital of Togo. Which is great. And now, we can tell all of these guys to attack their military base there, and the trucks can hang out in the back. All right, we got their military base, good. Now, we just attack this town of Sevi, I think, and then we will pretty much have the country. We took their capital. All right. So now, I'm going to have everybody go back to base and repair. No rush in uh, conquering this place. And now we don't need all of these guys. Oh! All the guys we had in Zodes just got blown up anyway. All you guys now go back over here. Cool. Let's see. Uh. I want all of you to go right there. Except for the supply trucks. I don't want them to be in the fight, obviously. Okay. Now from here on out, it should be just pretty easy cleanup duty. Togo is a very small country, so it's not difficult to blow them all up. We took their capital. Alright. They should surrender and we'll get all of their land all at once. Pretty quickly. Togo uh, only has some metal. Other than that, it's not particularly useful. We took their capital. Wow, they're not putting up a fight anywhere we go. Okay, here's a military base. They're probably going to have the rest of their military right there, defending it. And we got it. Okay. We took their capital. That's it. We got every single settlement in Togo. Alright, well I guess now we just gotta do the uh, cleanup duty. Drive around, take the rest of their land. They should surrender pretty much any time now. Gotta go drive through some undeveloped land, but that's fine. There we go, Togo's eliminated. Okay, cool. So now, we've increased the size of Ghana by quite a lot. And we'll send everybody to go back into reserve. Good job. Oh hey, you can see that these guys will run out of gas. Oh, no they didn't run out of gas. Okay, well normally they run out of gas. Now, what I'm going to do since we've won the war, is build a road connecting uh, these places.
go. Build one right there, and build one about right... Okay. That's just easier. Oh, I should probably build something over here as well. Uh, no, that's not really worth the money. Okay. Uh, how long have I been recording? About 25 minutes. <laughs> Alright. Okie dokie. So the game crashed. Hmm, that was odd. Anyway, I've been recording for 25 minutes. I think I have time for a war with Benin. So let's do that. Everybody's ready to go. All of our troops have finished resting and repairing and stuff. The roads I ordered aren't done yet, but that's okay. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I should probably build a road right there, too. Well, like that. There we go. Alright. 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 Oh, yeah. Should probably save the game. That's always helpful. Okay. Now. Benin. Awesome. Yeah, they have lots of allies. Those mean nothing. Allies in this game don't help you at all. They're pointless. Uh, anyway, they're pretty weak. We should be able to beat them up. Uh, let me see, where's my DEFCON? Uh, there it is. DEFCON at war. Okay. Now, everybody go right here. Uh, I need to get my supply trucks separated. Okay, supply trucks go over there. Thanks. And the rest of you guys uh, go attack these villages. You guys attack the villages. You guys attack the villages. You guys don't attack the villages. Just kind of hang out. Canada is eliminated. Oh, no, man. The United States got them. Oh well, not my problem. Uh, getting some lag here. Probably due to fraps, but that's okay. It's not too huge. There we go. Got them. And now we'll go over here. So Benin has a lot fewer resources, and I think a lower population, if I remember correctly, than Togo, even though it's a larger country. You, this should not be a very difficult war. Also, all their most vital military installations are in this handy little straight line, so I don't have to worry about, um... Oh no! Oh! Oh, they're attacking my... They're... Oh no! They're attacking my military supply convoys! What are you doing? Using strategy and stuff. Stop that. Anyway, it's all in a nice straight line, so I can easily just take it all. Now, go back and defend the supply convoy. Please. Wow. Frames. Okay, I messed with some settings, but it should be okay now. Alright, so go blow up those guys. I didn't anticipate them to actually use any kind of strategy or tactics or anything and, and defend themselves. Okay, so they're just going to shoot at each other for a while. And in the meantime, my trucks should be repairing. Okay, these trucks are not damaged, so I will send them over here. Man, Togo has access to artillery. Kind of messing us up, actually. Also, why are these light infantry guys not helping? Wow, are those tanks? Benin, what? Why does Benin have tanks? They must have bought the plans from somebody. Oh well, whatever, it doesn't matter. They are undersupplied. They cannot afford the uh, we took tank shells and stuff necessary, and bam, we got them. Okay. Now, let's fix the frame rate again. Eh? Frames? Gonna work for me this time, frames? Okay, you go over here, increase spending on so- no. So 
social programs are for losers. We should be pretty much in the clear now. We got their big cities in the south. Uh, just a few northern little bastions. Looks like they have a military base up there. They should surrender pretty soon. We took their capital. That, that place went without a fight. Aha! Ah, you see! They ran out of supplies. That's why we have to have the supply trucks follow them around. We they ran the out of gas. Happens quite a lot. Of course, if the supply trucks not a gas, then we're really hosed. We took their capital. Hmm. Looks like this is just going to be kind of annoying. Running around, taking land, dealing with a really low frame rate. Yeah, I'm going to skip this. Player eight, Benin, is eliminated. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty boring. There was no more fighting. They switched their capital a lot, but they didn't have any more units, so I just had to run around and resupply and stuff. Anyway, it is, guys. Going to go back into reserve, and now we're going to build some more roads. Yeah, you can see these little towns here are not connected. I don't like that, so let's connect them. Oh, man. Roads are the best. I like roads. Roads are great. Yeah, let's connect these guys too. Why not? And build a road. Up. I can't build a road through their land, can I? That's gonna take up a lot of my money. Oh well, anyway, that's enough for this episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time here in the much larger nation of Ghana.